Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have this little two stroke, I think it's eight or 900 watt generator. Let's see if we can get it running. Stay tuned. So I've had this for about two years and it's sat on a shelf, just sitting there waiting to be worked on. I think I paid about 10, 15 pounds for it. Don't think it was much. I think I got, I think with this deal, I got some chainsaws. I got two or three chainsaws. I can't remember, it was a while ago, but I've never got around to getting this running, so figured let's give it a try. First thing I see is this damage down here. The sponge, the filter is on the floor. So I do have that, but the filter's not really doing much because everything just goes straight by. It's a pretty bad fit. You can see it's his AC out and they've put the plug over that. So this is clearly just some universal plate and they're just putting their own stuff on by the looks of it. I think this is a craft. Powercraft, something like that. I don't know why there's no markings on it. I'm sure there was when I got it. I may have spilt something on it possibly. So we have a DC out on the side and we obviously have the, the mains on the back. It's not much of this. I think it's only, it is a Powercraft 720. It outputs 720, but really 650 in fact probably even 600 is probably pushing it for this i would have thought the feet look in pretty good condition which is a good sign that it's not had much use it's got a spark plug which looks new looks cheap i can't really see the the brand but it's not a it's not a main brand It was a bit tough, the first pull, but I think the piston was just catching maybe on a lip, but it seems okay now. The fuel line has perished, in fact it's not even attached to the carb, which is down there. It's not even screwed in properly. Let's get the fuel tank off. I mean, that is pretty useless. So everything is quite loose on this. This bolt is also loose. So I think someone has been in here and try to fix it. So we have the carb and the capacitor and the switch the capacitor is not attached for some reason. This is your connection for the front socket and that will be obviously your live and neutral. You have your connections for your capacitor and your switch. This has some tape on, let's have a look. Just make sure this is okay. Yeah, that's fine. Just using the tape to make sure these don't pull apart. I wouldn't have thought that was factory though. So we have the DC connections at the back here. It all seems pretty clean. The reason I took this off, well, one, to check the capacitor, but I also wanted to clean the carb because this was not running when I got it and it has sat here for many years. So it would probably make sense to clean this out. And I was gonna say clean up inside of here, but it's actually really clean. Just wanna quickly check out the fuel tank. It's something's rattling around, so I'm sure it's okay, but let's just double check. Oh yeah, it looks fine. There's some, yeah, there's a bit of, bit of dirt in there. I'll just put some fresh fuel in, swirl it around and dump it, and we can call that done. Oh, 
That's the screen. It's actually, it's actually really good. So the fuel is, well, it's not too bad. This isn't fresh fuel. This is old fuel that I've just stored and I used for clean out tanks. So I don't think the color is something to go by, but there is quite a bit of sand looking stuff at the bottom. Not quite sure that is, but the tank is definitely clean enough for now. I'll get rid of this and give this a clean up. Okay, so let's check the sediment bowl and see what we have. It's actually really clean. <laughs> There's still fuel in there. It doesn't smell like fuel, but it's all fuel for whatever reason. In fact, it could be just too struck oil. I think the fuel's actually evaporated, maybe. Yeah, I can blow through that with no problems. So, put that back together and put this back onto the fuel tank. I'll leave that loose for now because I'm not sure if we need access from the end or the front so that'll just keep loose and we'll tighten that up when we need to cleaned up quite nice i think you guys can agree it's a lot better than it was so we can call that done this is probably gonna need to go clean so let's have a look and see what we have This looks very clean. Okay, so let's start with getting these jets out. That's probably gummed up and the emulsion tube could be quite dirty also. The idle jet, well, we'll give it all clean. Might even put it in the ultrasonic and give it a proper clean. So let's start with getting this float out the way. So there's obviously, you got a jet here. We need to remove this needle and this jet. And we'll try and get the emulsion tube out. We should be able to get it out. We can knock it down from there. So let's try and get this main jet. Yeah, that's completely, that's completely blocked. You can't even see through that. So we'll use some wire first before we put that in the ultrasonic. In fact, I'll just turn the ultrasonic on. You'll hear a bubbling away in the background. Okay, that seems pretty pretty well stuck in there. I don't think it screws out. No, it just pushes out, but we'll see how it performs because I can't get that out. It's pretty tight. It's only brass. You don't want to, you don't want to damage it. That's for sure. So put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
to just over two. So try and remember that. That's your idle screw. That just pushes up against that and you can adjust the idle, but this is a generator, so that's not really relevant with this. The governor does all that for us. And that there's just a spring for the for the chalk. This is obviously a Chinese carb, but it's actually quite nice. It's it doesn't feel cheap. A lot of these you work on them and you can just feel the cheapness, but this actually seems okay. <laughs> That's I can't see through any of them. So there's a ball bearing in the top. But you still want to make sure the bottom bit is clear. It actually looks clean at the bottom but the sides are definitely gummed up so we'll give that a clean basically the ultrasonic cleaner and I've just found this this is actually off the fuel tank that needs to go on the fuel tank unless it will leak so I'm glad I found that I have to remember to put that back on so the ultrasonic cleaner you do not want to put in anything like a gasket or rubber because it will expand and you won't be able to reuse it. However, sometimes getting these out can be a bit tricky. So if you're stuck, you're best off leaving them, but that one's okay. Okay, so the battery failed. <laughs> you missed me realizing I'm wearing two different pair of gloves and basically cleaning the carb, which is a bit of a shame. However, the next step, as I've just said, and I'm now saying again, is to put all this in the ultrasonic cleaner and then put it back on the engine. So we'll just put this in like so. I use one of these tea bag strainers for the small parts. Just find it works really well. I think that is it. So let's put this in and close it. May as well put that in. Why not? So before I reconnect the carb, I'm just going to reconnect the capacitor because we need that. That's we're not going to get any power. It's easily done. Everything else seems to be okay. These are a bit fiddly to put back together because you fit the bolts through the front rather than the, the bolts actually hanging off. So I'll just push them through. Oh man, that gasket. I need to get myself some gasket paper. I can quite easily make that myself. I used to have a massive sheet, but I've, I've lost it ages ago. I did buy myself a big sheet of filter foam, but, and that was with the same order. For the life of me, I have no idea where it's gone. Make sure this goes on the same way it came off, just like that. I 
there's one rusty spring should work I'll need access to this needle and the engine run because I'll probably have to adjust that clean my casket off. I do not want that getting sucked in to the engine. You know what, before we go any further, let's just check that we actually have spark and check the plug. It's fouled. It's actually really good condition so I don't think it's had much use you definitely want that on Okay, so it's strange that the fuel exits. That's not going to work, is it? Because the fuel line is going to hit up right against this cover. I wonder if this is not the right tap for this engine because that is a very strange setup I could turn it I guess but it's gonna be awkward to get access to this see I can't even I can't even see the tap of that. This must be the wrong, the wrong one. Oh, unless I put the fuel line. That's going to be a very sharp angle for the fuel. Hmm. The only other fuel tap I've got is this one. And, well, it's broken. But it's the same. It's the same layout. This came with the engine, so it must... I suppose that might work. It should be really difficult to, to turn it off. It's doable. Right, I'll do it like that for now. Tell you what, we'll use this long one for now. That way I can move the fuel tank around. So I can probably I could do with actually an external fuel tank. That's something I probably should buy. I can hang this somewhere now. Don't know, I'll find somewhere. This is some 50 to 1. That'll do for now. <laughs> so we have fuel, it is turned on. It is not leaking, so in theory, we should be able to turn this on, choke, one or two pulls, and we should be running. Once it's running, I will need to check for power, but first, I want to make sure it's idling okay. I'm going to wrap an RPM card around this and uh, see what will run that. So, let's give it a try. If it sounds like it's under load, I will cut this off straight away because it's not under load, and if it does that it's probably making contact with something
managed to get this out, the emulsion tube. I think the ultrasonic cleaner probably helped. Put a bit of WD-40 and a bit of persuasion and we got it. Okay, so I've just been pushing a brush through the center of this and I thought I could see daylight, so I thought it was okay. But now I can really see daylight. That is very clear. So I think it was the emulsion tube that was blocked. So I'm gonna reassemble all this, put it back on and I'll bring you guys back. Hopefully it should run. It was generating power. It was about 110 volts, which is low, but it was, it was hunting. So once I revved it up, it did go to 240. So hopefully get this carb working and we should be good to go. Okay guys, so it's been a few weeks, it's been six or seven in fact. I've already addressed this in a video. I was working on this engine here and I've also replaced the springs on the Range Rover Evoque and I covered it in that video. Basically, I was ill for about four weeks and then I caught COVID. So I've been sick for quite some time. So I've not did any videos for, for a while. So we're back at this now. This was November, I think, last time I looked at this. The carb was a fault and we have a new carb. So this will go on and hopefully get this engine working again and hopefully produce some power. So this is the carb that we were working on last time. It had been in the ultrasonic cleaner, I would imagine, if I recall correctly. I think we took this to bits a few times. I'm not sure if this was the one with the emulsion tube that was stuck or something like that. It could have been on this carb, honestly can't remember, but we did spend quite a lot of time on this and deemed the carb as a fault. Now I will add, after we looked at this on film, when I was looking at the carb to order the replacement carb, I did notice that the ball bearing from this hole here was missing. Now I've, I'll have to check the footage but I did check these. I remember taking this off and ensuring that the ball bearings are in place. As you can see, there's a ball bearing here. And there's one, I think, yeah, on this side. I did check these, and I'm pretty sure that was there. And I wonder if, when I use the compressed air, I've blew it out. Now, with compressed air, I normally run it about 60 or 70 when working on carbs. I've been using these air tools on projects. I've not really did much on YouTube using these, but I do use these on other small projects I don't bother filming. And these need much higher PSI. And I forgot to turn down the air compressor. So I think I've had too much pressure basically going through this and I've actually blew a ball bearing out. So I did actually, I did actually put a screw in its place and I was gonna test it and I was going to put it back on and give it a try, but then I came across this, and this was, I think it was about four pounds, maybe five tops, really cheap. I mean, you can feel, you can feel the cheapness. This is a fifth of the weight of this one, but if it works, then I'm not bothered. So as you can see, this one has the ball bearing on the back, and it also has the one here, which is what's missing on the other carb so hopefully this should be okay the choke it all feels quite cheap to be fair but as long as it works i guess i adjusted this needle because it was four screws out that might be correct i honestly don't know the specs for this carb but i would assume two i don't know i i, I normally go two it seems to be a, a good number and then you can kind of work it from there so the idle screw seems to be a bit bit too far in that should be fine, these engines, they use a governor. So really, apart from, well, you, you want it out enough so that if it does actually go all the way in, it will actually not cut the engine off. But that should be okay, I can adjust that while it's on the engine. So let's get this on. Choke lever through, this flat section here, the bottom. All right, so if we get the linkage on, put the spring on first, because they can sometimes be a bit fiddly. 
and the linkage should just slide in. Like so. Switch is connected. All these are connected. The capacitor, did we check that capacitor? I can't remember if we... Yeah, we probably did. We'll see if it runs first anyway. If it runs and there's no power, I should probably check that capacitor. <laughs> It had spark, I'm pretty sure it did. We wouldn't have came this far if it didn't. Get the fuel line on, which goes down here, and let's give it a go. So the engine is good, there is no knocking, no smoke, so at least that side's okay, the carb's okay. The power output issue though that we have, anything under 600 watts, 700 watts, which is what this is rated for, I think, is it? So this is rated for 650 to max 720 watts. Now I've tried two items under 700 watts, I think one was 300 and the light was 100 they would not power the heat gun on setting one would not power this heat gun goes up to 2000 watts i'm not quite sure what trigger two is but when i got two and three it does give power obviously this will not power 2000 watts so it struggles so it's kicking in on the high end let's check the capacitor i i would have thought i checked this pretty sure i did but i do get confused I'd, I work on these for fun, I film some, others if I just want to quickly get them done I just come in and sort them out so it might have been something else that I was working on but this is a 15 UF capacitor so it's got a tolerance of 5% so that's at 15.65 or 75 something like that so this should not be reading over 16 so let's give this a a reading i've already set my multimeter to the correct setting and i've pulled the connectors off it's these two here doesn't matter which way you go as long as you're in contact and we have yeah that's way too much so that capacitor is no good that capacitor is probably reading 10 or so percent higher than it should so we're going to need a new capacitor so best get out and order one of them and try that so it's been a few days the capacitor has came in it is a cbb60 it runs at 1560 hertz but the most important thing is that it's 15 uf with a five percent variance just like this guy here so we tested this this was what 17 18 so let's test this one and see what we have so just to confirm if we test the original capacitor which is probably the one that came with the unit it is 17.05 that's bad so the new one should be 15 something let's try it 15.3 so that should be okay so the engine runs and the capacitor seems to be okay so hopefully we should get power unless obviously the back end of the generator is at fault but i don't think so i think that should be okay i think this will fix the issue on this one unlike the other one which only had this capacitor was pretty straightforward this one has four don't worry about them basically you want to use one from each side so if you use this one and this one it'll be fine don't use the same one from the same side 
we'll just basically I've actually nipped these up with some pliers because they were quite loose and that is much better it's a nice tight a tight fit and it quite simply in fact what I'll do I'll change this because I want the capacitor information and bend them like so I want the capacitor information to be pointing outwards so if someone works in the future they can basically look in and see what the rating is and test the capacitor so I'll just put this bracket back on I had this cover off because I wanted to make sure the wiring was all connected okay it is you have the earth going to the earth pin you have the live and the neutral which feed back to the alternator itself so that should be okay so let's put this all back together hook up the fuel line start the engine and see what we have hopefully some power So I've got the fan on, the choke is on, it's turned on, the heat gun is connected and the multimeter is also connected so we can see what kind of voltage we're getting. So let's give this a few pulls, get this thing room and see what's going on. So the engine settled out at about 57 point something hertz, which is, it's decent. That should get you about 240 volts. Unfortunately, we're getting 120. That to me suggests the back end. Yet again, one more generator where the back end is gone. I think this is the third, the third one possibly in a row. It's at least the second that this has happened. So engine runs, carbs are working great. The ignition's fine. RPM was reading okay. The voltage, it's like I said, it's giving out 120 volts, which is not correct. So I might just pull the back end off, inspect the rotor, inspect the windings, and see if we can see anything. When it's giving out half a current, it usually means half a circuit has went down. Let's pull the back end off, have a look. It's worth a worth a look, see what's going on. So we have this pin that's loose, that pin goes into the bearing at the side here and you just line that up with a groove at the side and it slides in. You guys can probably see that we have melted rope, we have some melted rope here, you have quite a few brown or darker areas, there's quite a dark patch here and there's one at the top, same wire coming in. So, yeah, the rotor could be okay, but the actual windings themselves are junk. So, this is junk. I wish I checked this. I did check the ohms on this, and I think they were like 3.4, which I thought was pretty decent. Obviously not. So this is junk. I do have another one. It's very similar, but it has a different voltage regulator. 
it has a different capacitor and I think there's something else different about it but the fuel tank the ignition coil I think even the exhaust there's a lot of this that that can be actually used on it so I think we'll end this one here and I'll get working on the other one hopefully putting the two together we can make one working unit apologies for not getting this thing running we could get it running but I'm just not going to invest the money so the time being guys thank you for watching like always please like subscribe comment down below and I'll see you in the next one